what's going on now. Wonder what mysteries lurk outside. Hmm, I foresee an ugly dude bubbling with rage, I'm sure. God damn it, Hex! I can hear you there! Open up, or I swear on my ancestors, I'll tear you a new asshole! Hey, Mr. Marco. Whoa! You've caught me a little off guard here. I love your new look, Mr. Marconi. You've really gone all out. Who the hell are you talking to, Hex? Don't you dare make fun of me, Neem. Us, the Marconis, don't take kindly to that kind of thing. The Marconis? This just keeps getting better. The Marconis, eh? I guess that explains the skirt. Always the same. It's not a skirt! It's a kilt! And it's a proud ancient tradition. I wear it like my ancestors wore it afore me, and my ancestors' ancestors afore that. And that's the way it is, Sonny. I thought all your ancestors were cannellonis. What? Hell no. Are you sure? I mean, I always thought... Oh, Hex, you're doing it again. Doing what? Stop changing the subject and give me my money. Yeah. Um, speaking of money, you've been doing pretty well lately, haven't you? Oh, come on. I don't care what you might have heard. I lose, and nobody bats an eye. But I win two games in a row, and everybody starts making a big deal about it. Losers! Games? What are you talking about? Yes, every Thursday. Uh, aren't we talking about poker? Well, I wasn't. Oh, well, uh, never mind. Don't make me say it again, Hex. Give me my money! There'll be hell to pay. I can now afford that hitman, don't forget. Okay, well, this must be your lucky day. Here's a nice fat wad of bills with your name on it. How do you like the sound of that? Monopoly bills? You already tried that once. I'm not falling for that one again. <laughs> I'm surprised you fell for it the first time. But one thing's for sure, I always try my best. You can't deny that, right? Sonny, I'm so sick of you. Say one more thing. Oh, relax, Mr. Marco... Makani. Mar Look, I have your money. What jump did you scam this time? I don't believe this is any of your concern, Mr. Marconi. Just take the goddamn money and get out of my way. Sonny, you know I don't really care for you, but mind your words when you're talking to me. You ought to learn some manners, you arrogant, good-for-nothing piece of trash! What can I say? I'm speechless, Mr. Marconi... Marcon... Oh, gee whiz, can't I just call you Mr. DeVito? No. All right, look, you got your money. Now get the hell out of my way before a breeze comes and we find out what's really under that skirt. Yeesh. I will leave whenever I find it convenient to do so. Well then, I'll be going now. I got a lot to do. Yeah, and a lot of people to annoy. What'd you say? I said you were a constant annoyance. Now get out of here. You're disrespecting me, Sonny. Don't take that tone. It might backfire on you. I'll be back. Yeah, I know you will. I wish you weren't, but you will. Hmm, this isn't going well. If I have to keep paying the old man every morning, I'll be out of cash in no time. I need to get that ring back as soon as possible. How's my favorite boss? Well, well, well. You got a whole lot of sack coming back here. I certainly wouldn't have.
You know, I love it here. Air conditioning, chilled water, magazines. And a very bad-tempered boss. Really? Where? <sighs> I'm not going to beat about the bush here. This package must be delivered to the sci-fi con ASAP. But there's no way I'm going to trust you with it. You, sir, are fired! What? I am the employee of the month. Ugh. Hicks, I told you! Belching the alphabet backwards doesn't make you employee of the month. Well, that would be very different if we lived in Ireland. Whatever! I just want you to leave. I don't want to see you ever again. The other option would be to strangle you with my bare hands, but it is easier just to fire you. Far less pleasurable, though. Oh, come on. You don't mean that. We're like two peas in a pod, like a TV comedy duo. We're inseparable. What would you do without me? Well, I wouldn't stay up all night worrying that any moment you might go and set my warehouse on fire. Again. I've never set the warehouse on fire. Hicks! Oh, did I set the warehouse on fire? Wow, it looks like once again parallel universes have outdone the original. No, wait, I don't think that's how it goes, but whatever. Get the hell out of here! You're fired! What makes you think you can fire me? Are you threatening me? Do you think that's wise? What have I ever done to you? You bastard! What about my super hot chick catalog? It was my most prized possession! You knew that! My marriage went to hell because of that damn catalog, and now you've ruined it. Actually, um... I don't want to hear about it! Get out of my sight! And what would you say if I told you I had your precious catalog right here? What the? What I thought you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same old story. Just save it and give me the damn package already. Well, let me see it. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, thank God. God? I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I just do what I do. It looks even better than I remember it. But it comes in a new bag, right? I guess. Whoa! <laughs> I thought it had got up in flames along with everything else in the back room. But you didn't start the fire. You were just trying to save it. Oh, you know, if it wasn't worth a fortune, I'd think this was someone else's. But it can't be. A fortune? Ah, damn it. Forgot about that detail. Kid, you're a damned hero. But what am I saying? You are employee of the year. See? I knew it. Here, kid. I know you really wanted to deliver this package, so here. Enjoy that sci-fi convention. You earned it. Oh, and don't forget to get the delivery note signed. It's the delivery note for the package. I gotta take the sci-fi con. Hold it, pal. Ah, oh, for the love of God, what did I do now? That's what I'm gonna find out. Are you Mr. Hicks? Mr. Hicks was my father. You can call me either Randall or Mr. Fantastic. Now, you know what? I want you to call me Mr. Fantastic. Don't push it. Now, let me get straight to the point. Your friend Matthew Griffin's been murdered at his apartment. Murdered? Yeah. Are you sure it wasn't a suicide? He seemed to know a lot about it. Oh, no, uh, he, he just, he used to say he would kill himself if the remake of V got cancelled. And I've been hiding it from him ever since it happened. But there's a chance he might have found out already. The moment the second season premiered, I knew his days were numbered. I don't have time to listen to your crap. You're coming with me. I'm sorry, but I am really busy today. I don't remember asking you if you felt like it. I said, you're coming with me. 
Okay, fine. Just don't start calling me Susan. Don't tell me what to do. You wait here, kid. You're the boss. Randall? Oh my god! Randall! I know, I know. It was on the news. I can't believe this is happening. I'm sorry, Sally. How do we not see it coming? <laughs> I never thought he'd go through with it. You know, he was always messing around. Well, this time it's serious, Randall. Well, maybe he didn't know what he was doing. No, no, no. He did know. <laughs> Are you sure? Of course I am. You know, it's all he's been talking about for months. God, I miss him so much. I'd do anything to bring him back. <sighs> Why is this happening to me? Actually, I'm not that surprised. Think they can do anything to revive him or something? After all, he's only frozen. Sally, this is the real world. If people get frozen, they die. I wish it was Futurama, but it's not. I never thought he would actually do it. <laughs> I just can't live without him. If only there was a way to undo this, <laughs> I swear I would never shout at him again about his drinking or his addiction to sci-fi. <laughs> I just wish there was something I could do. A way to undo this? Sally, there is no way to undo this. Unless you could find a guy that has the ability to turn back time, I'm afraid you're just gonna have to accept the fact that Matt is not with us anymore. You! Here! Right now! Ah, duty calls. Just ask them if they know someone in the CIA who can turn back time or something. <laughs> There's got to be someone who knows about time travel, right? And tell them that money is not a problem. I could just sell Matt's Garbage Pail Kids trading cards collection. Please ask them. Mm, okay, I will. Okay, what do you want from me? You don't seem very upset about your friend. One just gets used to these things. Are you used to seeing corpses? You don't even care that this one's your friend's? You know, I've seen his corpse so many times already. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Oh, come on. Just check out that look on Matt's face. <laughs> it's pretty funny, no? Oh, come on. I'm gonna prove that you killed him. When I do, I'll personally make sure you spend the rest of your life behind bars. Oh, man. Better men than you have tried, and they've all failed miserably. <clears throat> Don't you dare ever touch me again. I'm sick of going through the exact same thing day after day. I didn't do anything. Got it? Day after day? Sergeant, our test revealed that the temperature of the ice has reached 43 degrees below zero. Celsius or Fahrenheit? Kelvin. That is impossible, Ned. There's nothing below absolute zero. Well, now there is. This Frigomatic 9000 is the bomb. Hey, you dorks! Could you please shut the hell up? I'm trying to question the suspect here. Oh, here we go again with the suspect thing. Why do you think this was a suicide? Listen, Matt had been totally obsessed with the idea of freezing himself for years. He said he wanted to see a future ruled by machines. It's kind of hard to explain. Poor bastard. And what were you doing around here at this time of day? Don't you have a job to be at? Actually, I was on my way to work when I ran into you. Is that so? Emerson Express is pretty far from here. I know, but I had to deliver... Hold it. How do you know where I work? It's my job to know, kid. But this isn't about me. It's about you and what you know. So come on. Start talking. Well, there's not much to say. I'm a delivery guy and I deliver stuff. Sometimes here, sometimes there. Always delivering, you know. Always delivering, huh? Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Were there any problems between you and Mr. Griffin? Not really. Why? I'm asking the questions here. What made you put him in that freezer? I didn't. So you hired someone else, huh? Hmm, I see. Oh, come on. Do I look like I can afford a hitman? I better not tell you what you look like, kid. Do you know why you're here? Today? No. What, were you here yesterday as well? Well, uh, it's kind of a long story, and honestly, I don't think you're gonna buy it, so... I got plenty of time. Tell me everything, kid. Okay, then.
And that's why I need to save Doc before I attach the DeLorean to the steam train to be able to go back to 1985. Uh, no, wait. I, I, I think I lost it again. Enough! I don't want to hear another word. Sergeant, we're done here. So? Well, as weird as it sounds, it was a suicide. No one would commit suicide like that. Who could be that stupid? Matt? Matt was? Did you ever meet Matt? Shut it. I'm not done with you yet. And you? Why are you so sure he got in there himself? There's a suicide note stuck to the fridge. It says something about a future ruled by machines. Did you check the handwriting? Yes, we compared it to some threatening letters he wrote to Doctors Without Borders a few years ago. It's a match. Why would he threaten Doctors Without Borders? Well, Matt thought they were the ones who kidnapped his dog. I don't remember why. Then I found out Matt didn't even have a dog. His girlfriend confirmed that the victim had talked about cryogenically freezing himself several times before. <laughs> Maybe the world's better off without him. Okay, so if we're done here, I'm gonna take off. I got some things to do. Hey, not so fast. The only one leaving right now is me. I need to check some facts. I'm just going to radio some info in. Oh, come on. Sally already left. The girl was very disturbed. She needed to go home and calm down. Well, I could do with the rest as well. Kind of running out of cop jokes here. Great. Maybe then you'll say something coherent. Well, don't get your hopes up. You filthy maggot. You're not going anywhere until I make some calls. Oh, come on. But I gotta... But I gotta nothing. The suspect is not to leave the room under any circumstances. Yes, Sergeant. Yes, Sergeant. You can't hold me here. I'm almost sure I haven't done anything. Maybe not. But I told you, I don't like your face. At least I think I did. I'll be back in a few minutes. Well, at least he didn't call me Susan this time. So, who wants a cold one? You're one of a kind, kid. Yeah, I get that a lot. Although people think I'm just being sarcastic. Hey, at least open them for us. They're not screw caps, you know. <laughs> what do you think we are, superheroes? Well, no, you don't look like superheroes at all. But Matt didn't either, and I've seen him opening bottles with his ears. Plus, the intention is what counts, right? No, kid. Alcohol is what counts. And it hasn't reached my liver yet. Okay, okay. I'm sorry to desecrate your remains like this, buddy, but I have no choice. I knew I could count on you for just this one last time. Hey, did anyone say imported beer? No, but I'll take one. Thanks, kid. Now this is the way to work. Well, I only offer the finest quality. Here's to all those poor bastards who make January the best month of the year with their mass suicides. And to all those damn drunks who voluntarily end... I can't seem to open it. I should have never quit the gym. Looks like there's something inside. Probably something valuable, but the drawer's stuck. I've always wanted to do this.
the hell was that? Oh, uh, nothing. Just gas. My stomach's been a little up and down the last few days. Holy mother! You should see a doctor about that! I know, I know. I'm sorry. That's okay, but try not to make so much noise. We don't want to have to handcuff you to your friend's corpse. Don't you think that was a little cruel, man? Hey, understood. No more noise, promise. Fuck! All this fuss for a simple fork? God, I hope it turns out to be useful for something else. today dude we're gonna make some money and then we're gonna have an orgy with loads of hot chicks yo what the fuck you looking at i'll kick your fucking ass shit yeah hey what's your problem dude i just said hi oh my bad all right sometimes i just can't control myself i'm jay and this this is my head real life partner solid paul nice costumes really gotten into character huh costumes what the hell are you talking about um never mind so, uh, how come you're not at the sci-fi con? You know, that was the plan, man. Going to that shit-fuck nerd convention. But then we thought, the place must be a fucking cockfest. And you know what? We like puss. I mean, chicks. I see. Then, uh, I don't want to keep wasting your time with my shit. See ya. Yeah, sure, dude. See you later, man. Snoogans. What? What? I didn't say anything, man. Okay. I am a filthy Wookie. If you were an android, I would have ripped your arms off already, you know? Oh, sure, like in that TV show, right? Yeah, very clever. What TV show, Murray? I'm talking about real cinema here. I'm talking about what's commonly referred to as the saga. I'm talking about good old hand, beautiful Leia, and the Death Star. I can't believe you don't know what I'm talking about. What? Kid. Did you hit your head or something? Because I'm a big fan of sci-fi and Trek Wars has never been taken to the big screen. Trek Wars? What the hell is that? Hey, show some respect. There's a whole legion of Trek Wars followers who would be really offended if they heard you. But what are you talking about? Are you talking about Captain Kirk and the USS Enterprise? What? Are you serious? It's called the Millennium Enterprise, and the captain's name is Luke Spockwalker. He's been in charge since Lando Kirk Rizian put him there. Oh, great. I just destroyed the most famous sci-fi sagas in the world? Man, this really sucks. I hate that fucking ring. It's caused me nothing but trouble. Uh, is that from Harry and the Lord of Narnia? Man, I love that wizard hobbit. You know, always going on adventures with that cowardly lion and the tin man. Finally, some justice. It couldn't be all bad. So, about your credentials? Um, let's see, just a sec. I have a lot of junk in my pockets. Look, I have to deliver this package. I have the receipt right here. That proves nothing. I'm sure you wrote the address yourself. I could have, I admit it, but I didn't. You're so suspicious, Murray. If things are ever going to work out between you and me, you have to learn to trust me. I don't even know you. Oh, enough already. Can you read? Did you learn to read in school? Then read this. So, you work for Emerson Express. 
Okay. Everything looks above board. Go ahead. You can go in. About time. God, I could have sneaked in hours ago, but I just love these little chats of ours so much. Come on, get going. T-shirts? They say I was at Sci-Fi Con and I'm not a virgin. And what am I supposed to do with these? I guess I should deliver them, but... Is that my job? Delivering fucking t-shirts? How did it come to this? Hi there. Ah, how can I help? Well, do you sell anything apart from hot dogs? No, I'm sorry. I had crab juice, but I ran out. Ah, crap. Uh, tell me about it. It's what all the douchebag kids are drinking today, and I'm all out. Uh, that's a real shame. Well then, I guess I'll see you around. I guess. Good morning. What's up? Looking for anything in particular? Hmm, not really. Then stop wasting my time, kid. As if having to put up with this freak show wasn't enough. Well then, I'm gonna take off. Good for you. Gordon, would you like to remember the day you came here and made a fool of yourself forever? Then you need one of these teas. What? You don't like them? Come on, man. They're really funny. Okay, I get it. Dr. Freeman doesn't talk. What? Uh, no, no. I, I was just thinking. Oh, what were you thinking? Well, I was trying to calculate the approximate number of people that would beat the hell out of me if I wore one of those. I'm afraid it's just not worth the risk. Really? Because I think you're taking a big risk right now with that costume. Yeah, story of my life. But they might use knives if they saw me in that t-shirt. I'm not taking the risk. Mm, that makes sense. Hey, if it isn't the last son of Krypton. The one and only. Well, here's a free t-shirt for you, Kryptonian. Not so fast, my friend. What does it say? They say I was at Sci-Fi Con and I'm not a virgin. Brutal. Uh, that'll stop people thinking I'm just a stupid nerd. You can't say that while you're wearing that costume, buddy. You just can't. Uh, don't worry. I'll wear it with the Swamp Thing costume. Oh, great idea. That changes everything. Here, here's your shirt. The Metropolis Kid appreciates this, my friend. Ah, uh, what can I do to thank you? Well, I'm a little scared of what you might do, honestly. Relax, man. How would you like to have this nice pair of nunchucks? Uh, since when does the Man of Steel use nunchucks? You want them or not? Yeah, I want them. Well, uh, here you go, then. <laughs> oh, but this is a goddamn fishing rod. That's how nunchucks look on Krypton. Okay? Oh, whatever, pal. Thanks and get lost. you to these parts. I thought you told me to kill you if I ever saw you at one of these conventions. No, that was Matt. He's already dead, so, uh... So, uh, how's it going? Well, not that many sales, but the atmosphere is good. Yeah, you can hardly move but for all the boom ting. Yeah, I know there aren't many girls in here, but if some girl does come over to my stand, I have a little trick to make her fall on her knees. That's a big statement, do you really think? Son of a... my goodness! Do you really think you're gonna get any with those? Of course! I made them myself from an alloy I created, which I named Adamantia. Oh, you named it that, huh? Boy, you must have been really inspired. 
Yep, I don't know why, but it just came to me. Well then, if that's the plan, you might as well yell destroy when you pull them out. That's a sure bet. Hey, I like that. <laughs> How much for that ugly ring? More than what you could afford. You don't know that. Randall, I know you very well. And believe me, this ring is way out of your league. Psst. I could say the same thing about you and that actress that plays super hot chick. Aw, oh, low blow, man. I know. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about your feelings. I'm here to talk business, so tell me. How much for that stupid ring? A lot, Randall. We're talking about an astronomical figure. So huge, you can't even... I'm sorry, Charlie. You were saying something? Uh, how much do you have there? Honestly, I don't know. It started off as too much money. It may have dwindled a little, but I'll give you the whole wad for that ring. It's not that simple. This ring is probably the most valuable item in the whole convention. I can't just sell it to the first guy who walks over here flashing some cash. Oh, Charlie, please. I'm begging you. You know I hate begging. I need to buy that ring. It's very important. Aw, oh, poor Randall. You're acting like the world's gonna end if you don't get that ring. I don't know what to say. You can either go and find some more money, or surprise me. Uh, I could surprise you in so many ways, but then people would call the cops on me. Besides, how do you expect me to get more money? I know I sometimes use his name, but I'm not Donald Trump. There are many ways to make fast money, Randall. Selling your body on the street, uh, stealing stuff, offering your body for medical experiments, I don't know. Look, we've known each other for years, and even though I've never thought of you as a friend, I'd like you to have the ring. It's obvious that you're desperate, although I can't understand why. I really don't understand why I'm doing all this either. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Here's what we'll do. You go get more money, and the ring is yours. I promise I won't sell it until you come back with way more cash. If you're not here before dusk and I get a good offer, I'll have to sell it. Deal? Deal. You just wait here. I'll get more money even if I have to steal it from nuns. I saw you at Clayton's last night. No, oh, yeah. Well, I was drowning my sorrows. What's wrong? Did you find out your internet girlfriend is actually a guy? No, dude. Wonder Comics is canceling Captain Red. Yeah? How come? Our sales haven't been that good lately. Well, that's only normal after 35 years on the market. No! He's the greatest comic superhero ever! I grew up with him. He was always there for me when I was down. Besides, now that Super Hot Chick is his sidekick, they make the most fucking amazing team-ups. Okay, Charlie, don't get your panties in a bunch. I get it. The world needs Captain Red. He's Super Hot Chick's boyfriend? No way. Well, they work together. Huh. What a loser. By the way, how old is Super Hot Chick now? Does it matter? Well, it's just I'm sure she's not even in her 40s anymore. Well, that's your opinion. In that lingerie catalog from 1972, Super Hot Chick is described as a woman of her time. And to be honest, if you focus on her style, you can easily see the passage of time. Yet, you can't deny she still looks hot as hell. Yes, that's true, but maybe it's because she's a drawing? What do you mean? The Super Hot Chick series is still going strong. But Captain Red... Yeah? What's the problem with Captain Red, exactly? Well, like I said, they don't make as much money as they used to. But that's normal. Time goes by and people get tired of seeing the same things over and over. That's normal, you say? Captain Red is in his prime. He's in an almost stable long-term relationship with Super Hot Chick. And his arch-enemy Moose Man is about to be defeated for good. <laughs> Moose Man? You mean the guy that shoots chocolate mousse out of his hands? Hell, Charlie. Even his enemies are lame. Hey, be careful there. That's my favorite saga you're talking about. Choose your words wisely. And don't forget about my retractable claws. Yikes, how could I? So, uh, how did he get his powers again? Oh, that is a fascinating story. His name was Tim Willard. He was just a kid who loved paintball wasn't very good at it, and didn't have all the right gear to play, but he never gave up. So he was a loser. 
he wasn't as skillful as the rest, kind of weak for his age, and he always wore this yellow sweatsuit instead of camouflage clothing. So he always gave the other guys a good laugh. One day, sick of being constantly mocked, he decided to wear his grandfather's captain uniform. Unfortunately, he didn't realize it was a full dress uniform with a blue hat and badges and stuff. Oh my god, what a big fat loser. The battle took place in this old abandoned industrial park where people used to process radioactive waste. Spurred on by the uniform, Tim Willer entered into battle, buzzing with adrenaline. But it was all in vain. This time they laughed at him more than ever. But Tim was going to answer back, but before he could even think of something, everybody started riddling him with paintballs. Little by little, his whole uniform was dyed red. All of it, except for the hat which flew off his head with the first burst. And while he was being shot, he noticed, sadly, that even his own team members were joining in. When the firing stopped, everybody gathered around Tim, who was writhing on the floor, and they put the hat back on his head, still laughing mercilessly. Next, they grabbed him and put him inside an empty barrel of radioactive waste and pushed it down the hill. Now, what those guys did not expect is that the barrel would explode, giving birth to the ultimate Avenger, an Avenger ready to beat the crap out of him. <sighs> Amazing. Young Tim Willard ceased to exist. Captain Red had been born. With his superhuman physical abilities, his now radioactive paintball gun, and doomed to wear that same uniform for all eternity, he spends his life protecting the just and punishing cruelty. Sometimes going a bit over. Cool. Can I borrow it? Captain Red number one? No way. Its location is a secret, and I keep it in a reinforced vault. What happened to your finger? Well, it was, uh, just a little accident. But did you cut it off? Kinda. Yeah. But then the doctors reattached it. Aw, oh, come on! That was your chance to get that robotic finger Matt gave you for your birthday fitted. First of all, it wasn't my birthday, it was my cousin's funeral. Second of all, he didn't give it to me. He threw it at my face while I was giving my speech. And last, it wasn't a robotic finger. It was a chicken finger. Oh, really? I'm sorry, my memory's not what it used to be. There's Captain Red, over there in the red suit and blue cap. Lord Vader, Commander. The shirt the Emperor ordered to celebrate his cat's birthday has arrived. Now nothing will stand in his way. Impressive. Most impressive. The whole galaxy will kneel before us. Ah, dude, cut the space crap already. You have failed me for the last time, Admiral. You called me Commander before. When was I demoted? Um... And by the way, if that Trek Wars thing is true, then you shouldn't even exist, right? Oh, no, no, don't try to backtrack now, and don't change the subject. Uh, uh, um, if you stop asking questions, I'll give you this candy. Take candy from a stranger? Hmm, I haven't done that since I was a kid, but okay. Anything to get this storyline and coherence over with. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. You know, today's not a good day for me. Maybe we can rule the galaxy some other day. By the way... How does Anakin like those great shirts? That name no longer has any meaning for me. I understand. And judging by that costume, I don't think you'll quite be able to live up to what the shirt says. But hey, don't give up on your dreams, okay? If you must know, I have a girlfriend. Cyber girlfriend? Is there any other kind? Well, in that case, I'll give you three. One for you, one for your cyber girlfriend, and one for your robot girlfriend. I'm sure you have one of those as well. Touche. Thought so. Oh, God. Hey, don't judge me. I study computer engineering, and my father is a mechanic. What else am I going to do in my summer vacation? 
Sure, man. I'm not judging. Here's your t-shirts. 